I've probably said this several times before, but this time I actually mean it when I say that this is probably my favorite and best text effect in DaVinci Resolve. So to get started, you just right click in the media pool, go to new fusion composition, hit create. I've got one open already, so I'm going to use it. But for yours, double click on your fusion comp to jump into it. And this is the one that I've got here. It's really simple. All this part here is just setting up the background. This part is the text. We got to merge. Looks like a lot of stuff going on, but it's a lot of lights that you just copy and paste and make some minor adjustments. Obviously the render 3D makes our stuff look 3D. And we got this brightness contrast to make it better. This stuff here is just for the background. So it's really unnecessary and that's it, really fun and nice. So I'm gonna move down here so we can start our own version. And right here is our text 3D. Let's drag and drop this in here. And this merge 3D is right next to it. Let's drag and drop that in and our render 3D. All right, that's pretty easy. And we'll connect these up here to here, click and drag here to here. And what we'll do is preview this by pressing two. And I'm gonna give myself some more room here. Let's type in our text. The font we're using is a free font called RoboFan Free, and you could get it from defont.com. And with our text node selected, we could expand extrusion, and we don't really want to extrude anything. We just want a bevel. So we can start to change our bevel depth and our bevel width. And before we do anything else, we should click on this drop down next to the circle, turn on lights so that we can see what we're doing. And now you can see as you change this, the bevel sticks out more. And as you change this width, it gets wider. And once we got that, we really could start looking at our render. So let's press two to preview that. We can select our merge 3D and press one to keep that open on the left. And obviously we need to scale this down a bit. So select the text, go to size, Bring that down. Now let's select our render 3D node and under lighting, click on enable. We have no lights in our scene, so we should throw some in there now. I'm gonna click in an empty spot to deselect and hold down shift space bar, D-I-R-E. Right here where it says directional light, you could click on that and then press enter or return. We got this directional light. Let's give ourselves some more room here. So here we could see our light, but we need to connect it. So let's click and drag this output onto our merge. And now we can see we've got a really bright light. And as we move this up and down, nothing happens because this light only is adjusted through rotation. So I'm gonna take it and go to the transform find rotation. I wanna rotate it on the X, something like that. So we're mostly focused on lighting this top side here and it looks like we've got that pretty well. Now let's copy this, control C, click on merge, control V to paste that. And this one we can move down again. It does nothing, but this just helps me to understand what it's doing. So I'm moving it down. This one is gonna light from below. And to make life easier, if I click on this one, I could see this is the light that's selected. If I click on this one, I see this is the light that's selected. So just placing one on top of the other. Now, visually, this makes a little bit more sense to me when I click on this one. And I'm gonna select this directional one light and go to its rotation on the X and rotate that up. Zoom in here so we can see what it's doing. The controls, go to intensity, drag this down. And we can see the angle that we have, it's really only affecting the bottom side. And I think the intensity is a little low. So I'm gonna set this up at two. I could go even higher, three maybe, that might be too bright. Um, so now we got a really bright light underneath. I'll bring that down just a bit. So we've got the light on the top, we've got the light on the bottom, and you know, you could always come back in here and make some adjustments. Let's see if this could use a little bit more. And I kind of like that because I don't want too much light on the front. Well, not yet, because what I'm gonna do is, let's actually space these out a little bit. I'm gonna select this one, Control C again, click on here, press Control V to paste. And now we're gonna have a light that lights up the front only. Let's move this. That's the light we got selected and go to transform, rotate that. This light that's lighting the front, I don't want it to be too bright because obviously it's just gonna be blown out pure white. So go to controls, intensity, and bring this down. And now you can see in our render 3D view, it's looking all right. Now what we could do is just separate this up a little bit. What I wanna do is set up the background. So I'm gonna click a 
background node and drag it out here. And I'm gonna press one to preview that on the left. And for this background, we'll click on type. We'll go to gradient. We want our line to start from the top, go to the bottom. So let's make this line vertical. Let's take our X and type 0.5 and 0.5. And then we could set this to one top. And then we could set this one down here to zero. Now let's get the colors that we want. So I start off with the gradient going from blue to white and that's the first half and then black to red to white and then i added some extra details in between i'll just delete them clicking and dragging up lets you delete uh stuff so i just added those extra stops in there to give me a little bit of extra detail just by clicking in here and clicking this arrow shifting the colors around just a little bit to get the exact color how i wanted it starting off with these colors and then they were just a little dull so i moved stuff around but let me just undo back to where it was good. Now that we've got that, we've got these little mountain ranges and in our gradient, it's just flat. So as not to get confused, I'm gonna select this node, press F2. This will call background underscore REF for reflection. And I'm gonna make another one by clicking and dragging another background. And with that selected, I'm gonna press F2 to rename it. This one will call background underscore mountain. And we'll click and drag one output onto the other output so that we get a merge here. And let's press one to preview that. Okay, so this background, we want it to be on top. Let's select our merge, press control T so that it is on top. Now what I'm gonna do is select the mountain layer and let's start drawing on it with this B spline tool here. So I'm gonna click on the B spline tool. I'm gonna give myself some more room. I'm gonna click right around where the black line is and then click again on this side of the black line. And then I'm gonna click one more time up here and one time up here, one time over here, and then clicking back on the original point to select it. What I'm gonna do is just click and drag to add some more detail in here. I'll move some of these around. And it's not much of a mountain range, so let's add a little bit more detail in here by clicking and adding points. Now we wanna go back to our text 3D layer. And in that layer, we wanna to go to shading it's using one material and we just uncheck that. Now we've got two materials. So we wanna add a color to the material. We don't want it to be solid. So let's click on this image here and let's click and drag our merge into the section here where it says color image. You can't see anything, but you just click and drag on here and release. And now you've just connected these two. And it looks a little washed out. If you're going for the retro look, you've got it. And there's probably a way that we could get this to look at 100% saturation with a different kind of shader, but I'm keeping life simple and I'm just gonna adjust colors later to get this to look right. And if we look closely, we could see that the texture is repeated over each character. If you like that, that's great. But if you don't, you could go to mapping level instead of character you could switch this to word now our texture is stretched out through the length of the whole word and if you do it this way you're going to want to add some more detail in here and we could do that by just clicking points moving them so this is the b spline that i made and uh, just want to make sure that there's no little gaps in between our gradient and our black little mountain background and with our render selected we could come over here to where this little sun icon that's our brightness contrast and just click on that and press two to preview that and let's take the gain up a little bit let's take the contrast up a little bit let's adjust the saturation keeping this as a guide we could see we're starting to match our colors pretty nicely here maybe take the lift a little bit down here to punch those darknesses in now what we can do is if we want a little bit control over the light around the edges let's just move these over here i'm going to select our merge 3d and i'm going to press shift space bar and type in light and then find our point light click on that press enter for the point light let's just move this so we know we got a different section here all right let's click on merge 3d press one to preview that click on our point light and then click and drag to move that up and you can move it forwards or back. What I'm gonna do is take the intensity and make it three so it really stands out. So as I move this into just the right spot, if we drag this from left to right, we can get a nice lighting effect. But what I wanna do is go to quadratic decay and let's adjust the intensity now. And I'm gonna bring it up a little bit so it's starting to affect the bevels a little bit more. And now you can see you can get a lighting effect as you drag this from left to right. Let's bring this forward just a little bit more so we could see it just starting to affect the fronts of the faces. 
All right, now we got a nice lighting effect that we could use. I wouldn't want it all the time because it's blowing things out a little bit, but it's a nice look if you want to have a bit of a glint on here. You just have this start off way on the side here and then you animate it coming across like that. So what I would do would be to have one coming across the top and then we could control C this one, click on our merge again, press control V, paste that. This one, I would click and drag it to the bottom. So we have a lighting effect across the bottom. Just bring it forwards enough where it just starts to show on the front of the letters. You could do a thing where one comes across the bottom and the other one comes across the top. Okay, I'm just gonna delete those for now. Connect the media out so it renders on our timeline. And if you're not a big fan of Transformers. Goodbye, David. And I hope you find your safe place, your refuge. Thank you.